Shalom, Shalom, Shabbat, Adonai. Welcome to the sixth Exodus program. Thank you for listening. The name of this segment is Endurance. I want to say to my my Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, I want to read to you some things, some letters that the Most High wants us to know about. I want to read to you from the second books of Thessalonians in the book of Titus. Okay, I want to remind you of some things for us to do. These letters are for us, us Hebrews. I want to read it to you. Let's begin. This is evident of the righteous judgment of God that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering since indeed God consider it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us when the Lord Christ is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord. They which suffer punishment and eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we also pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve from good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of the Lord may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and our Lord the Christ. Now concerning the coming of Christ and our gathering to him we ask you brothers not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by the spirit or by spoken word of this letter seem to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord will soon come and let no one deceive you in any way for the day will come unless the rebellion comes first and the son of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God proclaiming himself to be God do you not remember that when I was still with you I told you these things and you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time for the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work only he who knows restrains it it will do so until he is out of the way and when the lawlessness one is to be revealed whom the Christ was killed by by the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all of his power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and to be saved therefore God sent them a strong delusion 
so that they may believe in what is false, in order that they may be condemned, who did not believe in the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You know I'm talking about the Jewish people. They have made themselves fat in our country. But God has a plan for them. I'm just telling you brothers to hold on. But these things must come to pass. My beloved brother. By our Lord. Because God. Shows you as his first fruits. To be saved. Through the sanctification. By the spirit and the belief of the truth. To this he calls you. Through our gospel. So that you may obtain the glory of our Lord the Christ. So then, my brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by the gospel. Either by our spoken word or by the letters of the prophets. Now, may our Lord the Christ himself and God, our Father, who loved us and gave his Eternal command, eternal commandments and comforts to us through hope and grace, through the comforts of our heart, establish them in every good work that you do. Now, my brothers, I want to read to you from the book of Titus. I'm going to start at verse number five, chapter one, verse number five. This is why I left you in Crete, so that you may put what remaining into order and appoint elders in every town as I have directed you. If anyone is above reproach, the husband and one wife and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery and insubordination. For in every, every overseer is God's steward must not be above reproach. He must not be ignorant or quick-tempered, or a drunkard, or a violent person, or greedy for self-gain, but hospitable, a lover of goodwill, self-controlled, upright, holy, and well-disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word of thought, so that he may be able to give instructions and sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict contradicts it. For there are many who are among you are insubordinate, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision party. They must be silenced since they are upsetting the whole families by teaching from shameful gain what they ought not to teach one of the, the Cretans, a prophet of their own. The Cretans are always liars and evil doers and evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply so that they may have sound in the faith, not deceiving themselves to Jewish myths and the commands of people who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled and the unbelieving, nothing is pure. But both their minds and their conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but they deny Him by their works. They are disgustable, disobedient, unfit for any good use of good works. But as for you, teach what is according to sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith and in love and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be re relevant in behavior, not slanderous or, or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good. And so train the young women to love their husbands and their children, to be self-controlled, pure, and working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, so that the work of God may be revealed. Likewise, 
I urge younger men to be self-controlled, shown self-respects to be models of good works and their teachings to show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that controls and not to be condemned so that the opponent may not be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything that they do and not being argumentative and showing goodwill and faith so that everything they may adorn be adorned in the doctrine of God and our Savior. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to have self-control, upright, and godly lives in this present age, waiting for our blessed hope in the appearance of the glory of the great God and our Savior, the Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify us for himself, a people for his own possessions, who are a zealous for good works. I declare, I, Yeshurun, declare these things to you, to exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no disregard to you. I want to remind you to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, and to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our day in malice, in envy and in hatred, by others and having one another. But when the goodness and the love and kindness of God has appeared to us and opened our eyes to let us know that we are Hebrews, that there are standards that we must walk by and not being foolish, given to various pleasures of hating and hating others. But when the goodness of our loving Father have compassion on us, we should also show compassion one to another. By his mercy and by the washing and the regeneration and renewal of our spirit, whom he has poured out upon us righteously through our Lord and Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope and the eternal life. The saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things so that those who believe in God may be careful to devote themselves to every good work. These things are excellent and profitable for, for every people. But avoid foolish conversation, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. As for a person who stirs up divisions after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is wrapped in sinful, he is already self-condemned. I want to say in my closing that our people have been in slavery in every civilization since time began. And I want to encourage you brothers, as Jewish people encouraged to change doctrines, words, they have control of all the media and have hidden our identity for 400 years. But our God is faithful and just and have opened our eyes so I don't want you to lose faith now and don't be dogmatic concerning your inheritance. God knows who you are 
and God has a purpose and a destination for you. So, I mean, yes, you're on. I am the Lord's servant. I want to encourage you to hold on and do not let the knowledge you have to cast you into the same heap of destruction as the Jewish people who are heading and high minded. But I want to encourage you to be sober minded and to love your enemies. This is the life that our Lord and Savior lived. He was not rebellious. He was not heading, and he had to deal with the same people as we're dealing with today. The Jewish people, you think, who you think the, the Sanhedrins are? Who you think that killed him, who led the Romans against our Lord and Savior? Who you think those people were? They're the same people who are in our country now. And be careful, brothers, who you listen to and who is on the Internet telling you things about the Christ. There was a, a guy on uh, I don't know who he is, but he was made a recording said that Jewish people have never been in Israel, but they have been there the whole time. They are our same brother who is Cain. Yeah, the Jewish people are descendants of Cain. They are also descendants of Esau. They are the same people who are also who are bear partners with the Assyrians. They are also, that means the Syrians, mean the people of Syria. They are the same people who have bad partners with Moab. Moab are the people who are Jordan. And the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans are the people who are called Americans or European. Those are the Chaldeans. Now, we are in slaves here in America. We are in exile. Many of us don't know that we are in exile. They have forgotten about God and forgot about God's laws by the seducing of the Jewish people, by trying to seduce us and keep us out of our land. But they can put whatever they want to put on the Internet and change whatever words they want. God is in control of all of this. So I want to encourage you, brothers, to hold on, keep the faith and, you know, be sweet. Be sweet. Don't don't be evil and hateful toward these people on the street corners because the God knows everything and of course there's an internet but God does not need the internet to redeem his people nor does God need any of us to redeem his people God will get the glory if you look back in the Bible every time God has brought our forefathers back into the land he drove out our enemies so, my brothers, I want to tell you, your strength is being still. That's where your power and your strength is. Your power and strength is not going out on the street corner telling people about who you are. They don't care about you. And what you say to them is not going to mean anything. They, it's not going to, your strength is being still. Studying, praying, keeping the law within your home. Being still, learning how to be still. That is your strength. And waiting for the day of the Lord. That is your power. Now, when I see you on the street corner, I'm seeing someone who's trying to argue with a person who does not have any understanding. And you cannot open their eyes because God has closed their eyes. And only God is going to open their eyes. So learn this, brother, that you cannot open the Gentile eyes. You cannot do this. This is not a teaching class, okay? It's not a teaching class. This is not a class for teachers. This is not a place where you go to learn, okay? God has not called you to be teachers. He did not tell any of you to go out on the street corners to teach anyone. God is in control. Now let God handle his business and you handle your business by showing your strength by being in your homes. If you go out on the street corner, show love, brothers. Show love. Show the spirit of Christ. And you cannot argue with an animal. Someone who do not know God, do not know. You cannot teach them by yelling at them and arguing with them. That is not how to do it. Christ never, the disciple never argued with anyone. And stop trying to teach everyone. Don't you know that teachers will be judged more severely and if you are wrong and that's even more 
And let me tell you something. There are a lot of Bibles that are printed by Jewish people. And they are very deceptive. They put these Bibles out. What do you think a lot of these Bibles and books come from? They come from Jewish people. So they are not here to help you. They are trying to destroy you. But you have a Savior. Put your trust in Him. Do not put your trust in your thoughts, your works, or your education, or what you think is right. Your strength, brothers, is in waiting on the Lord. That is your greatest strength. It is not to be seen. No one has seen my face. I don't care if anyone sees my face. I'm not here to get a credit or data boy awards or to be seen. I'm not here for anyone to say, Oh, you're you're smart, you should run. Oh, you should run, you have all these things. I didn't get nothing by reading books. The Lord woke me up and told me who I was and he named me. So what I know I will share with you. But right now I'm more concerned of you going back to Israel that you inherit the land that the Lord our God has prepared for us from the beginning of the world before the foundation of the world was even established he had prepared this land and this country for you remember you are the chosen generation you are the chosen people no one else is and nothing is going to change that and you don't have to argue with anyone or plead with anyone or to tell anyone who you are if you know who you are, there's no need to tell anyone else. Listen, do not cast your pearls before swines. It's an act of self it's an act of futility. Listen to me, brothers. Do not cast your pearls before swines. These people do not care about you. The Chaldeans, listen, we are in slavery. This here is exile for us. These people do not love you. Don't you see they're killing you every day on the street corners and there is no justice for us? None. No justice. But yet you're going out on the street corners yelling and arguing with them. Brothers, you can show them love. Any person that you come in contact with, you can show them love. If you go to the store, you can help someone carry their groceries. This is love. This is compassion. Go to the hospitals. Go to the prisons. You don't need to go out on the street corners. You don't have to record things on the street corners. What you do for God, He will He will bless you, and bless you secretly. The things that you do on the street corners, you don't have to record everything that you do for God. What you do for God, God will bless you openly. So you don't need to record what you do for God. God knows what you do. No need to flood the internet with a bunch of rubbish. Okay, my brothers, I'm not scolding you, but I'm telling you in love. And I want you to make it because you are precious to the Lord and you are precious to me. And I will I love you. And the Lord will let you see me one day. But right now, I cannot. I have to be obedient to my father. But you will, you will see me. But know this, I know everything that the Illuminati and the Jewish people, the American government, the British people, all of them, even China, have been plundering us all these 400 years. All these years, they have plundered us. So they have all collaborated with us, including the Palestinians, who has also been in some co cahoots with them planning our destruction. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of how they have collaborated even here in America, in the land of Egypt, and Babylon. The Lord will come back with vengeance. Listen to me in my closing remarks. The Lord is going to come back with some fervent heat and he's going to set this whole world on fire. So you need to be sure you're in the right place so that you can be able to be able to escape the destruction that's coming upon the world. You, did you hear me? He's coming back with fire. And he's going to burn every nation. And he's going to set up his earthly kingdom. And those who is not with the Lord will be disappeared. 
That means every evil, high-minded, hatred, people, adulterers, idolatry is going to be taken from this earth. There's going to be no competition. And I don't want you to be on that side. I'm not going to be on that side. So that's why I keep quiet in my strength, it's in my quietness. And I wait for the Lord because I know he's coming back. And I know he's coming back with a vengeance because he's going to set up his earthly kingdom. And you have promises with God, my brothers. You have promises with the Most High. You shall reign with the Lord our God. This has been made for you from the foundations. And I want to tell you that heaven and earth will become one. Our fathers will join us in Jerusalem. Not many days now. Not many days. Those who are sleeping in the grave. They will rise up and they will walk with us in the new Jerusalem. God is going to rebuild Jerusalem for us. I've, I've been able to make plans for the whole city. On my website, you can be able to look at it. Where well, my uh, digital scribe downloads everything. You can look on the website under um, Rebuilding Israel. And many things I've told you how Israel is going to look. But I tell you, you have a bright, bright, bright future. So do not cast away your confidence. Do not, just because the Lord has not returned yet. And believe you me, enjoy your rest. Enjoy your rest. Enjoy the Sabbath day. Enjoy your peace so you might enter the rest of God. You may come into his rest where we enter into our country for our forefathers. Because the Lord is waiting and our forefathers are waiting to meet us. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All of our forefathers will awake and they will see us and we will see them. They are waiting to meet us. And God's going to build out. He drive out the Jewish people from our country because they refuse to keep God's laws. You see how evil and how treacherous they have been since they've been in the country since 1948 and worshiping bones and worshiping the star God and the host of heaven and digging up the bones of their forefathers, worshiping them. God had made a covenant with them. But they have not kept the covenant. And they are our brothers. He is Cain. He is also Esau. So they, both of those families are our brothers. And they have been doing evil to us in every civilization. And the way they have tried to eliminate us by worshiping Satan. They have tried all of all of these attempts to keep us in slavery and deceive the whole world in every civilization from the beginning with Egypt all the way here to America. And now they're trying to kill us all because they know their time is soon. I want you to do one favor for me. I'm going to end. Uh, I want you to listen to the book of Psalms and the book of Job. It is the destruction of the Jewish people. When you listen to it or you read it, and remember, to get your old Bibles out and read your old Bibles, the old King James Version Bible. They have scriptures in the Bible where it said there are two men who will be sleeping in bed. One will be taken and the other will be left. Now, what does that mean? I don't need to debate what it means. But the Jewish people have taken, this, taken those words out. It just says two will be sleeping in bed. But the old King James Version Bible says two men will be sleeping in bed. And we know today being homosexual is very popular with Jewish people. And this is their lifestyle. This is what they like. But they have ruined a lot of our black men by giving them a lot of money to let them poke them in their booty hole and to turn all men gay. But I want to tell you, be strong, my brothers. And do not go after riches, fame, and fortune. Same thing to our women. Hey, you don't need a contract with these people. God got a contract for you. We're building. Um, if you want to do acting and singing and dancing in Israel, you'll have it. 
right now if you look at the city called AI the words are a I that's gonna be your Hollywood it's gonna be AI listen to me AI is a ruinous run this big open field right now but it's gonna be your Hollywood and you'll be able to act sing dance and everything you want to do and I'm telling you you will not be disappointed when you go to Israel it's gonna be worth your time we have we have finished rebuilding Israel we have finished building everything that you do here you'll be able to do there everything acting singing dances I've taken all things into consideration everything that you like it will be there and I've made it where everyone will be able to go to the mountain of God in eight directions eight different ways you'll be able to go the last thing I just finished working on is the sky bridges it's gonna be two sky bridges one is going to be on the west coast and one is going to be on the east coast. The, the bridges are going to be so high up in the air, people are going to think you're walking on clouds. But I ask the Lord to build those bridges. You watch when we get there. You say, hey, yes, Ron. Hey, I, I can walk on these bridges. And I tell you, it's going to be beautiful. And the people that live in the north part of Israel, uh, when the Lord build those new ruined areas and houses on the north, when they come through the, the bridge on the north, on the north side, on the northeast side, they can come on the bridge, on the sky bridge, they can come to Jerusalem. And people that are coming from other countries, they can come. There's going to be so many ways to come to, to Jerusalem. People are going to come just to, just to see what, what ways they can come to see what sites are the most beautiful way to get to Israel? It's going to be the bullet the bullet tube. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the bullet tube because I haven't told you anything about that. It's going to be tubes that's going to be built on the ground. They're going to be uh, transparent like glass. And the tubes are going to be able to be air pressure tubes. They're going to have a uh, turbine, a turbine on the back of it, a fan turbine and the turbine will carry six four to six passengers and uh, it will have underneath the tubes will be airflow they have uh, holes underneath the tubes and they will have skis skids skis skis underneath them about uh, they have about 38 skis on the underneath them and they will be propelled by air it comes from underneath, underneath the, uh, the tubes that they're in, and all things are going to be fast. And you won't believe this, but 17-year-old guys are going out black men. 17, you the ones who are unemployed, walking the streets with their pants hanging around their ankles, they're going to be operating these bullet tubes. And uh, there's going to be an underground scene. Uh, in the, in, the, in the Sea of Galilee, you'll be able to walk underneath the Sea of Galilee. It's going to be a glass tube. It's going to be an observatory, but it's going to be a tunnel where you can walk. Say, for example, if you're in uh, Galilee, uh, in, in Gav, of Megiddo, or Dan, if you're in any of those cities, you can be able to walk across the west so you're underwater all the way to Nazareth if you want to continue you can continue walking underground to Jerusalem or you can walk on the river walk all the way from if you live on the on the west and north side you'll be able to take on the river walk and you can walk the river walk the, on the Jordan River all the way to Jerusalem and on the on the east on the east coast there will be a bridge on the east coast. Now this bridge is going to be, it's going to be made of concrete. It's going to be so high up in the sky, look like you're going to be walking on crowds, and you're not going to be able to see the bottom, like the foundation. And when you look down, you're going to see Jerusalem. Jerusalem is going to be so beautiful. 
your mouth is going to drop wide open. I tell you, I've, uh, I've made some buildings in Jerusalem where it's going to be uh, like four corners of the buildings. Like when you come to an intersection when you're driving or walking, there's a, uh, a circle that's going to be in the middle. And that uh, on each corner of the buildings, you can walk through the circle of the building. It's like the building's going to be a circular. The buildings will be towers. But on the ground level, like three stories above the ground, that it's like a circle. You'll be able to walk through four buildings, like a complete circle. All of them will be connected to each other. So you can walk to four corners of a building where these buildings are connected. And, and on the top of the building, you can walk on top of that circle to go through four of those buildings also. And uh, your mouth is going to drop open when you sit Jerusalem. The Lord said to give me no sleep until I have finished. I finish, so I finish. I hope you like it. I have uh, all the football stadiums built. Uh, uh, also, I got all the uh, the trainings, the training facilities. I got all them built now. The training facilities are going to be in Golan Heights. All of your uh, training facilities are going to be in Golan Heights. There are 20 football teams and 62 soccer teams. And there are 21 basketball teams and 18 women basketball teams. And, uh, but I have finished. And so maybe I can get some sleep now. I don't know if the Lord will let me sleep. I don't know. I don't know what else. He will put in my mind, or I don't know who mind I have nowadays. I don't know if I have his mind or if my mind is working. I have no idea. But everything that uh, that I write, I get up throughout the night. And I write down whatever comes in my mind or whatever I dream, whether it be words, drawing, pictures, or images, anything. I will get up and write it down. And I will draw it. And so that you are going to be blessed, my brothers. So hold on. Listen to my words. I will not tell you anything that's not true. But these things are faithful and true. If I am not the Lord's servant, then none of these things will come true. But I assure you, I am the Lord's servant. And he has called me from my Lord's womb. Isaiah chapter 49 is me. I am the Lord's servant. He has written about me. In the word of God, also Isaiah 44 is me. I am Yeshurun. Sometime in the word of God, God calls me Jacob, and sometime in the word of God, He calls me Israel. So it's d difficult to look and to see, but when I look and see, I can see it. But you can look and see. You can see when God is talking to me. If He says Jacob, or you know, He says my servant Jacob. Or he say, my servant Israel, he's talking to me. But if he's talking to you, the nation of Israel, he's talking to you. But if he's talking to the inhabitants of Israel, he's talking to the people who are Jewish. Or the inhabitants of Jerusalem, he is talking to the Jewish people. So you have to uh, understand these things, okay? My beloved, hold on, in, hold on in there. Don't give up your faith. And be kind. Be sweet to everybody. And uh, stay away from the street corners. All right. Love you, my brothers. If I don't see you soon, I'll see you in the sky.